if you are one of the nearly 50% of Americans set to travel more this year, according to Forbes, be prepared to account for some snags with the airlines. The last summer and winter seasons saw issues with everything from FAA computer failures to piles of unclaimed baggage. But as this year's peak season approaches, the question remains, is the airline industry set for 2023? Here with more, we've got Anthony C. Roman, AC Roman and Associates founder and CEO. Anthony, pleasure to speak with you as always. All right, help us kind of get a grip on what we're gonna have to wade through in the peak travel seasons this year. I think we're gonna have a terrible travel season come spring and come summer when the passenger demand absolutely surges. The airlines beginning in the mid teens really failed to look at the immediate future and develop the software improvements, hardware improvements, but most importantly, the looming retirement age of the baby boomer pilots at 65. In the next two to three years, there's going to be massive retirement numbers, and there are not sufficient pilots to replace them. It takes years for pilot training, and then the experience necessary to become qualified to train as an airline pilot. So the airlines have have really dropped the ball on this, particularly the low cost airlines that attempt to keep their budgets low. The larger airlines doing better in this regard, but certainly not perfect. I certainly got a taste of that when I was traveling this week, numerous delays when I was traveling. I mean, you would think off of the back of COVID and sort of some of the problems that we saw over the the Christmas and and December break there, that some of this would at least start to get resolved. But are any lessons being learned here? And what can they really do timeline wise, given how long it does take to train new pilots and new staff? I think the lessons are stinging for the airline industry. And again, the, the larger airlines are doing better in this regard. But during the pandemic, and particularly in the first two years, mm-hmm. the uh, pilot retirement rate and the pilot early retirement incentives provided by the airlines resulted in a massive loss of pilot numbers. And there just was not any planning or significant preparation for the sudden surge in demand following the dwindling of the pandemic restrictions. So the airlines are really in a dilemma. One of the programs that they have initiated that has been looming in the background and is time proven to be safe are accelerated pilot training programs, shortening the amount of time, not the amount of training hours, but the amount of time it takes to qualify a young pilot for the right seat, the co-pilot seat in an airliner. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, the the airlines also have to improve infrastructure. All of the new personnel, particularly the ground personnel, and you layer on top of the new ground personnel who are somewhat inexperienced in dealing with passenger uh, problems and passengers being upset, you also have the necessary security at the airport, which has improved in terms of uh, moving passengers through those checkpoints, but still is an annoying process for the passengers. Then you have inexperienced ground personnel acting in a public relations and customer service role. Then the shrinkage of the seats, both in width and in legroom, and the, the pressure of the pandemic, the cancellations, and you have a very angry customer base, not looking pretty. Indeed. And I mean, even during the pandemic, we saw that a lot of you know pilots were getting furloughed, a lot of airline staff there. So they don't really feel that incentivized to come back. What is the need for sort of these, some of these pay increases? Are you seeing some of these companies, especially larger carriers, stepping up when it comes to some of these pay raises so that we don't see some of these strikes continue to then exacerbate the current situation? Yeah, that's another element that the airlines are finally increasing the pay and providing signing bonus incentives to young pilots to join the accelerated training program and to make the industry and that career path more lucrative. It is very expensive to become a a new and young pilot. It takes years and, and training in those aircraft costs a lot of money. The airlines are now 
contributing scholarship-like payments to new pilots in the accelerated programs and have begun negotiating increases for the current pilot staff uh, that are in place. But for the next one to three years, there are just not enough pilots to go around. If a captain or first officer on a scheduled airline gets ill, there may not be another pilot to replace them. That flight's going to be canceled. Superimposed on that, you, you have some terrible weather this year. We're getting very strong weather fronts. That's a natural cause of delay. And then the FAA has the same problems as the airlines in, in a lag of upgrading their infrastructure, particularly software and hardware, which has resulted in some episodes of nationwide delays. And so I want to talk about JetBlue because obviously they decided to reduce the number of flights coming out of New York and then also the merger with Spirit there. Is that going to help or hurt this current situation? I, you know, I, I think it's going to, to really uh, be an ongoing problem regardless of what's done immediately now. It just takes time to resolve these uh, deficiencies that have occurred since the mid-teens, despite the forecasts being exactly what they are, that passenger uh, demand was going to increase and the looming retirement age was present. The pandemic really gave it the knockout punch, and that has what caused these massive delays that we've never seen in airline industry. Now, a handful of the larger airlines which have much more infrastructure, which did invest in infrastructure improvement. Airlines such as Delta, one of the largest, if not the largest airline in the world. Uh, if, if the passengers spend the time to look at the cancellation rates, uh, the delay rates of each airline, which is all over the web and perfectly available, they'll be able to choose those airlines which have a better record. Now, um, that does not guarantee that they will be on time or that, that uh, the flight will not be canceled, but it'll improve their odds. It may cost a little bit more, but it may be worth it. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say, which is that it's not going to guarantee that you're going to get a good price on that ticket since that's a core marketing component for a lot of airlines. Anthony C. Roman, AC Roman and Associates founder and CEO. Thanks so much. My pleasure.